Are you related to that guy? <laughs> We're all friends. Yeah, it kind of has a senior coconut feel. That's to it. Uh, it was Mikey LHD from the website, and he wanted me. He asked me several times in the email to make sure to say hello to Griffin for him. Oh, hi! You be, son must, of a bitch! Must be a big Griffin <laughs> fan. Clearly, he included her in the theme song, I I like, so he must be yeah. a huge fan. I thought. I, I wish that the weather reflected the the feel of the song. The it's so know, cold out right hot now. Hot Latin beat. You wish we had senior coconut weather. Yes, today? exactly. Here's what the theme songs are teaching me about our audience. They all own a Casio keyboard. <laughs> Every single one of them. Is that the most like uh, prolific piece of technology in history, is the Casio keyboard with the rumba beat? <laughs> it could be. We have one, don't we? We've used it before. I, I have like three in my house, I think. <laughs> we used to have a big one in the recording booth uh, right. at the, at the Buda office. Three, I yeah, think what happened? The little yeah. jingle with it. What happened to that? I think it's in storage. Oh, okay. I think the power Somebody didn't cable wander off got lost it? for it. We've lost our passion for the beat. <laughs> so. We moved on to other things. Well, I think the cultural... Zeitgeist for the Casio keyboard was the Cosby Show episode that starred Stevie Wonder. Did you ever see that one? No, where he I don't recorded think I ever their saw voices. That. No, but you should date yourself. Some more. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with that? It's little Theo Huxtable never hurt anybody. No, I never saw that. If I did, I don't remember it. Long time ago. <laughs> so should we introduce ourselves since people are seeing us Absolutely. in the podcast for the first time? This is our first video podcast. Yes, that, that's not game footage. We've done right. Game footage video podcasts. Oh, right. We did the uh, survival mode yeah. one for when Left 4 Dead came out. We and then I think we do it for ODST, ODST as well. As well. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, well I thought it'd be a fun way to celebrate our 100th podcast by yeah. having a video one. Hey, congratulations to us, by the way. We should have incorporated more of a Latin feel to, uh, to the video podcast. <laughs> so I'm Gus. Hello, I'm Bernie Burns. I'm Griffin Ramsey. Jeff. <laughs> and Jeff and Griffin are a little under the weather today. I, mm -hmm. We are a little fluey. Mm -hmm. We're getting You're, our germs on the mic. But don't feel bad. In about three days, you guys will be too. Awesome. <laughs> They're a little sick and a lot grouchy. No offense, guys. <laughs> you guys are... Supposedly, men are worse at being sick than women. You're busting all the stereotypes No, well, well, she's kind of a Jeff, dude. Jeff's been stuck... He, Jeff's been sleeping a lot more than I have. Like, I had to come into work yesterday to finish painting. and So I haven't had as much of a recovery period as he had has. And now I'm getting mad. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't gotten to lay around eating bonbons. How is your early morning Guinness? My early morning Guinness is good. It's actually Coke Zero. Oh, so <laughs> uh, don't break the Guinness. illusion. All right, now I have to get a beer. I'll get a beer. I'll go with the Guinness piece. doesn't look like Guinness on camera. You got a Coke Zero looks like yeah, Guinness on camera. The, it doesn't have the phone. This should be the world's flattest Guinness, <laughs> which I guess also makes it the world's flattest Coke Zero as well. Hey, since you didn't come into the office the other day, uh, twist off? Did, did you? No, just like he's not twist off. Wow, did you uh, play any games or anything while you were at home? No, dude. Believe it or not, I was too sick to play video games. Too sick to play video games? Yeah. I find that hard to believe. I watched a movie. I watched the Get Smart film. That was my entertainment for oh, yeah. the last two days. How was, how was that? Yeah. It was pretty good. Anne Hathaway's hot. She's super hot. It, had a, it was a crazy cast, that film. Yeah. Going back a couple of years, but yeah. It was good. So was, Steve Carell, I'm sorry, Steve Carell between season one of The Office and every other season of The Office, he had massive plastic surgery, right? Or hair plugs, anyway. He had hair plugs in his teeth and all that stuff done? I he had to have, right? He looks you way know, better. He looked good on The Daily Show, though. I thought that they did something to him to make him look, like, weirder in they, the like, first they, season they of The Office. It. Like, they plucked <laughs> it or they did something, yeah. I, I got the impression it was the opposite. No, I... I yeah. I've read that too. Like they just combed it in a different way, and that was it. Oh no, that can't be. The no, case. no, no, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> no. There's no way. Well, whatever. The it, he looks great. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> and this is his last season it's, of The Office, it's right? A shame. He's, shame he's leaving. He's mm -hmm. going to be off in a couple episodes, I think. No, not, he's not even going to make it all the way through the yeah, season. Yeah, I think four episodes before the end of the season, he's going to bow out. And then Will Ferrell comes in for a little while. Will Ferrell mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. does really? a three episode arc. You think they're going to put Ricky Gervais in there? They already did. No, I mean, is he a permanent have, replacement? No, I don't think so. I don't think he'd do that either. Do you? I don't think uh, Ricky Gervais would be interested in doing that. We're about to make Gus mad, by the way. Why is that? Because we're going to bring up Ricky Gervais. <laughs> and there's a piece of Ricky oh, Gervais man. news this week that made Gus very, very no, angry. No, it, it didn't make me angry. It made me angry that people were shocked by it. That and makes he, you angry. He was he was, he was was <laughs> angry by proxy. It wasn't angry at the news. It was angry. Like He got reinvited to host the Golden Globes again next year, which was not a surprise. But everyone acted like it was a big surprise. Not at all. Not a surprise. No. And so every, you, you feel everybody was duped by the fact that they weren't really upset about Ricky right. Gervais making all the jokes. You, you think he really went out and did a monologue that he didn't clear with them ahead of time or told jokes that they didn't, they weren't expecting? Maybe the crowd wasn't expecting it, well, but the people who run the Golden Globes I don't what know. Was I happening. mean, I've heard stories about him just insulting people left and right in Hollywood. So I wouldn't be surprised if he did just, like, come up with his own monologue. But, I mean, I, I, I'm not surprised that they're yeah. inviting him back. I mean, it, it was good. good. People are talking about the Golden Globes. Of it's, course, it, the they love it. Ever. Yeah. yeah. 
If he had that done that, they would have literally pulled a giant hook and like pulled <laughs> yeah, him just off like the stage. Or off. And they would have had like Chris Rock waiting in the wings to go out. <laughs> like a replacement host, just in case. I wonder if they've ever do they have replacement hosts? I mean they have to have somebody lined up just in case something horrible happens. I don't know. Well they got a whole audience full of actors. I'm sure they can find they're somebody. They're, like <laughs> they're like Baldwin, step up. <laughs> Riff for the next two hours. Like what do you think would happen? Like he gets killed on the way to the arena? I mean, or what if happens. he falls off the stage? Flu. Heart who attack? Knows? A flu. Yeah, they always, all uh, about you. Every time DMX Not agreed to perform at the MTV movie, uh, Music Awards and he never showed up, they always had a replacement artist. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. You know, yeah. most people when they get the flu aren't expected to go to work still. I, I know. See, she's making it all about her. It's Here like, what happens if he gets the flu and then they have to cancel no, the gold flow? <laughs> just retaliating. You know, he's a, he's a professional. He would soldier on. Yeah. Yeah. For his craft, yeah. he'd suffer. That's right. He would show up for he work would so he can make and make suffer. fun of all the people that are there. So why can't you do that as well? That's all we're asking. <laughs> why can't you be like Ricky Gervais? But, you know, I noticed that Ricky Gervais does make fun of a lot of people, and the only thing that they have to make fun of him about is the fact that he was fat. Not anymore. And now he's not fat yeah. anymore. It's like he took they, that away. They can yeah. make fun of the fact he's British because he can't change that. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing you can do about being British. <laughs> how do you, uh, how That's would you a make... stink he can't wipe off. Yeah. He, can, no, no, he can never not be British. Yeah, and he's like that really like typical kind of British where it's the take the piss. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, that kind of humor yeah. that really is a specialty of British humor. And uh, I don't know if you could go after him because I think he'd come back after you a what, lot harder. What are the genres of British humor? Is it take the piss and cross dressing? Are, the, are those <laughs> the, the two that have like Monty Python? Also, walking Ricky really Gervais? fast. Or Benny Hill. Yeah. You know, you can make fun, but so, so much of our TV now is based on British TV. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of scary. Well, it's true. We Even the new mega hit skins. We gotta take a quick break. Uh, we're gonna show a uh, drunk tech animated adventure. Oh, we take breaks now? Yeah, we take breaks. <laughs> and like uh, so we're gonna here. check this out and we'll be right back. All right. Well, we can talk about our day, right? We started our morning uh, in the office. Working. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, then uh, we, we promptly good, left there and good went straight all. to the airport to get on a plane. Got on a plane. And flew to San Diego. Sat next to two fucking cunts that refused to turn their electronics off through the entire goddamn like, flight. I don't understand it. I like, don't understand like, it I looked, either, I Gus. I looked over there, and like, the bitch was using her iPhone, right? Using and her iPhone? We're fucking flying. We're taxiing. And I was like, that's totally an electronic device, right? And the flight attendant comes by and says, you need to turn it off, ma'am. She's like, oh, yeah, that's right. So she turns it off, and we get off. We're five feet off the ground, and she pulls her SLR out to start showing. She take pictures of the woman next to her. She's taking flash photography as we're taking off on the plane. If that had gotten in the rearview mirror of the pilot, we'd have been toast. That stupid bitch and her dumb friend put all of our lives in danger. It, 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 Why it, do we have rules as a society, Gus? Right. You know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna take. I'm not paying taxes anymore. This lady showed <laughs> me. Yeah, I'll just pull out my fucking camera. I'll pull out my iPhone. I'll pull out my fucking vibrator. I don't care that I'm putting 245 people at risk. There are small babies on that plane, but whatever. Who cares? Because I wanted to look at photos of my dog. <laughs> so I'm not going to pay my taxes anymore. I'm going to shoot a cop. Uh, thanks to Jay or Dan for the uh, Drunk Tech Animated Adventures. I'm glad we're able to incorporate those into a video podcast officially now. Those things are awesome, dude. Love them. I love them. Okay, so before the break, we were talking about British TV invading American TV. Right. Has anybody watched American Idol with the new hosts? I have. No. No. At all? What do you think? Um, you can tell that, they're, that they've changed some things, but it's, I, I never liked it to begin with. <laughs> the only thing I like about American Idol is watching the idiots trying out. Is J-Lo hot? Oh, really? You like that stage of it? I don't like that yeah. at all. I actually want to see the kids that sing well. What's wrong with you? Well, I yeah, just, I, I'm fun. so... It gets old <laughs> watching people be bad at singing. I can watch myself sing no, it's, all, it's awesome. But, like, it's like not only watching them be bad at singing, but watching them be crazy is also what's great. And you get a couple of those every now and then. Yeah. But I feel like now, more than anything else, what you're seeing is attention whores who are just trying to fit that mold of being the crazy, bad singer. You yeah, know? there's people who are definitely, like, trying to act. Yeah. 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 A lot of them. So how are Steven Tyler and J-Lo? Perfectly fine. Yeah? there's It's absolutely no change at all. Like, Who's the new Simon? I what? have to watch this stuff because my wife watches it, and I watch it by osmosis. Mm -hmm. Half the it seems, like, <laughs> it seems like Randy is trying to step up and be the new Simon. Randy? Kind of. He literally moved into the Simon seat. He moved into the Simon no, seat. And kidding. Yeah. He, he's not like mean, but he'll... Uh, so Steven Tyler's Paula, right? I heard that. Yeah. He's kind of like spacey and out there. <laughs> Yeah, but he gives like he gives good advice. Well, he actually really had a career in music. I, mean, I think I'm more well, of a she Joey. She had a career in music. She's just fucking drunk and crazy. No, she does. She does. She's never had a drop of alcohol in her life. Oh, that's right. 
I think yeah. last week he had to apologize because he does this thing too where if a really beautiful girl walks in, no matter how old she is, like the bottom age now is 15, that can, that yeah, can yeah, audition. Yeah. He's like, all right, hey, hey, <laughs> he, was, he was really creepy with a 15-year-old. After. He was like, that skirt's just the right length. It's like, <laughs> But it's awesome in a creepy way. Yeah. And he's, no, he's really, I mean, he's really fine. I mean, I think that the judge, I can't remember her name, that they had last season. Cara Diaguardi. I only saw her like once or twice. Those two, Jennifer Lopez and Steven Tyler, seemed like a much better fit than she ever seemed, even after an entire season. Well, she was always like kind of hanging on Simon, right? Weren't they always really flirty in like a weird way? Yeah. yeah. It, it also seems like the voting's more fair now. It's like if two people vote yes, they go. There's not like Simon overriding everyone's vote with what oh. he thinks. And that's count Even though that's why more. everybody watched the show. Right. Yeah. Who cared yeah. what the other two thought? And why the X Factor is going to bury American Idol. When yeah, it comes do you think out. it's going to survive even if it is yeah. also, okay transition? An another thing I noticed is in the first episode this season, they specifically said what record company uh, the, the winner was going to get a contract with, and it was a different record company than before. Oh, yeah? And I read somewhere online also that that record company is going to push for each week for the contestants to sing songs from their catalog. Instead of having like themed shows. Oh, um, really? Yeah. So they're using it as a vehicle to promote their own catalog of music. So it's totally just a sponsored it's just, well, yeah. corporate thing. I'm now. totally yeah. fine with that. It was a uh, Interscope. Okay. I think. I also read that uh, J Lo is upset with how popular Steven Tyler is and how he's getting the majority of the screen time. <laughs> I didn't realize we were all such American Idol fanatics. I, 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 I think we hit our. I'm talking about American Idol. I just Idol. I read the internet. I'm, I'm embarrassed now. I, I really <laughs> am, and people can see the embarrassment. So Egypt then. <laughs> well, did you guys see Anderson Cooper get punched in the head? Oh, yeah. yeah, I did too. Yeah. yeah. Do you know who? Do you know who Anderson Cooper is related to? He's related to somebody very famous. His mother, is Sly yes. Cooper. Yes. Do you know? No. Yeah, his mother is uh, what's her face? Um, oh, his mother is Gloria, Gloria. Vanderbilt. Yeah. really. Yeah. Of like Vanderbilt jeans from the '80s or whatever. Yeah. And the Vanderbilts, who are yeah. wealthy multi, beyond belief, multi, multi millionaires. I, I don't know why that's. Where did Cooper come from? I don't know. Maybe that's a stage name. Yeah. Could be. Do you know where Anderson Cooper got his start on television? Man, I want to say I saw him on the overnight news, I think for, is he NBC or ABC? But he was like on world news, and he did like a four-hour shift in the middle of the night. Uh, I don't know what place that's. Oh, yeah. I know what you're going to say. Yeah. You're going to say he was on The Mole. He was yes. the host of The Mole. That was a good show. It was a great show. It was a great show, and uh, Jeff and I, back when The Mole was on initially, we thought it would be really funny if we picked an obscure celebrity and made fan pages for them on the internet. So we wanted to make an Anderson Cooper fan page and make it super creepy. We were going to build a shrine in, our, in the house to Anderson Cooper, and it uh, turned out we didn't need to because tons of people do that now. Yeah, now there's about <laughs> 20,000 of those yeah. that already exist. I've, I've never seen The Mole. What is it? It was a game show where all the contestants – it was you know, it's like a reality slash game show where – uh, over the course of a season, everyone competed, kind of like Survivor, in different events. But one of the contestants was a plant by the show who was secretly trying to sabotage everyone. Okay. And every week, every contestant had to try to guess who was the saboteur, who, who the saboteur was. Who was the okay. And the person, they took a test at the end of the episode, and the person who was the furthest off on the test was the person that got and kicked out. It was, there were crazy questions. It would be like, when you're taking the test, it's like, when you ate dinner Tuesday night, who was the mole sitting next to? Yeah, and it was stuff like that. It was it was crazy, and and it was cool too because like there were you could win up to I think a million dollars, but the mole could sabotage certain yeah. contests and make, but then you, make the, you win less money. Make you win less money, but then the mole didn't want to sabotage every contest, so the mole would intentionally win some contests, but then that made less money for the mole. But the mole had to like try to string it along as long to as he or she like could it, yeah. to make it. Yeah, they, they had celebrity mole after that, which was not nearly as good. But it did have a modern show. And, and likewise, the players who were playing, it was in their best interest to make everyone else think they were the mole. But if they ended up actually sabotaging a contest, they would cost themselves money. Okay. So it was it was fun. And it, it took was, place. It was really complicated. Had a problem though. It took place all over Europe too. It was like a different country every week. Okay. And it, it did have a problem though in that. The people on the show figured out who the mole was by about six episodes left, and they had to cut around it. And they really, and it was clear yeah. they had to cut around it. Yeah. Okay. Even like the last episode, they avoided the mole because they didn't want her to like you know sabotage their yeah. their last couple of contests. It's a and shame. Lose the money. It only made it. I think it made it a season. They started a second season and they never finished it. Yeah, I think that's right. Which is a shame. It's so weird too because the guy who won that, I don't know, some gay guy that I don't remember his name, but he reminds me so much of who's the dude from Iron Man. Uh, the the Iron Man two, and he was in Moon. Sam Sam Rockwell. Sam, Sam Rockwell. Rockwell. Guy reminds me of Sam was, Rockwell. Every time I see you, Sam Rockwell, I think of the mole. Was he the helicopter guy? The guy who won the mole. Was he the helicopter pilot? 
I don't know. Oh God, who, I don't I can't remember. I'm gonna say yes. Yeah. Why not? Sure. I'm saying. I know, like one of the la- there were like two. I don't remember the who. Dude, the I remember there were the, two dudes. Helicopters. And one of them was a helicopter. Yeah, he pilot. flew. Yeah. yeah. That okay. Guy. I'm gonna look at the mole, I'm gonna look at the mole <laughs> winner and see. I'm gonna look at the mole winner and like, see what I can find. I might find a horrible like contest winner who had the biggest mole or something like that. I'm afraid. <laughs> hey guys, why is your internet slow today? Um, I you know I don't know that the Wi-Fi really reaches this room. <laughs> You, you asked me you, you, earlier before we got started, you're like, hey, I think the internet's down. Uh, I can't load anything. And I went to the computer, type Reddit, loaded instantly. Google, loaded instantly. You're like, huh, well, that's weird. Yeah, the inter- I got that's weirded. The internet, <laughs> the internet does not have my back because every time there's a problem with it, I show it to Gus. He's like, works fine for me. Yeah. You must have the best experience on the internet and on our website. Everything, al- everything <laughs> always works. Everything is blazing for What's you. What's it like for nothing to ever break? It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> exciting i hate that phenomenon when you're having a tech support you know, you know problem what? that that's it's, weird it's because i haven't fucked up with my own computer my computer works fine my computer works fine too really you edit your host file don't you look at this yeah look at that. i do edit my host file See? Yeah, there, there we go your fucking from, story's unraveling from time to time i do that yes fucking modifying low level system i found a new program where um i tend to like to surf a lot and so to keep myself on task i found a program called freedom which is a shareware app that's on the mac but you basically click it, and then you specify how much freedom you want. Like, I want 30 minutes of freedom, and it blocks all your internet connectivity for 30 minutes. You could also – there's there's another program called Unplug Your Ethernet Cable. Yeah. I don't know. if That, <laughs> that one's also free. Well, I, I also like, have uh, Wi-Fi, but I hear it doesn't work in every room in the building. <laughs> I like the one called Self-Control. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that is Self-Control. That's I went out and bought a shareware program <laughs> and paid $15 for Self-Control. That's responsibility. That's not Self-Control. Sadly, I think there actually is another version – of that shareware called Self Control, and I wouldn't buy it on principle. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the fuck are you saying about me? Literally, I cannot find season mole, season one mole winner. You can probably check on Wikipedia. Here's a picture of Richard Hatch, though, season one survivor winner. Nice. Didn't he get in trouble he, again? He's, he's about he, to go like, to jail in, again. Yeah, back in prison. Yeah. Man, Maybe he likes it in there. Paid. <laughs> You know, you that's a good they one. probably don't let him walk around naked. The uh, the mole uh, winner for season one was Stephen Coles, I believe. S- Stephen, Stephen Coles? Coles. That's Brandon. Brandon's uh, doing our audio engineering today. Stephen with a PH. I asked for my own camera and I got I got rejected. <laughs> <laughs> but we did give you a microphone. We, we we couldn't put enough grease on the camera to make you look good in a vest. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's that's funny. <laughs> did you uh, that, should we talk about Brandon's massive cut that he has in his leg that he's really upset? He about? may require surgery. Oh, really? What happened? Yeah, what happened? The Brandon hurt his leg, and he's really concerned because the cut on Wait, his leg has turned black. I, I did not say concern. I said it's gross. I you, said it looks gross. He has and a scab. And I was trying to share it. Do you know he's how, so do, sheltered, he's never had a do, scab. Is this your life. first scab? No, it is not my first scab. It's my first scab in like 10 years. Do, do, let me tell you something. You <laughs> okay. know, do you how know you how he hurt himself? How did you manage to go that long without cutting yourself? He, re- he, re- he walked into his bed. He walked into his bed. The bed was not in the normal position. Wait, wait, wait. So the bed being out of position changes the story? Did you walk into the bed? I walked in. It, the, there were no lights. The electricity was out. I literally. You know, it hurts. See. It hurts more when the lights are out and your bed's moved. Is you your can't bed? See. Is your bed made out of razor blades? How did it's, you? It, it's it's very sharp metal edge, on the end. So are you gonna die then? I might. Okay. I, I, at least I'll lose a leg. Do you think you can make it through the podcast? <laughs> we'll see. All right. Well, try to hang in there, buddy. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate it. He's got a scab, and he's 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 worried that it. It's his legs going to fall. I'm not worried. I never said I was worried. Do you know why his bed was out of position? Because he doesn't have heat. He was scared of the window when it was windy the other day. It was really windy. That's 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 I'm not going to make fun of him for that. That's a fucking valid concern. I was on the third floor in like the windiest day in Austin (coughs) ever, and my (laughs) my window was violently shaking. (laughs) I just want to say I'm not in Gus's camp. Even though it is a valid concern, I will still make fun of you for it. You'll always have me. I will always be the rock for you. Don't worry. Yeah, we had that crazy cold front blow through. Uh, with it was super windy that night. I, it woke me up like at three thirty in the morning. I, I could have sworn there was a tornado outside. I hate wind. Man, I that beer smells really good. Oh come on! Have All a right. beer. I, I'm gonna have a beer. Right, well, why don't we take I'm a break? Do... You get your beer and uh, check out this drunk tank animated adventure, and uh, we'll be right back. Oh, we got a second one. Have you ever heard the whole saga of how I got Bernie.com? Bernie Tasmania is a city in Tasmania, and it's spelled exactly like my name, B-U-R-N-I-E. Well, I registered Bernie.com a very long time ago. So the city of Bernie Tasmania started to contact me, and they wanted the website. And I made these outrageous demands like, I will give it to you as long as you have a parade in my honor, and I get to march in the front (laughs) of the parade. And you build a statue of me, which I'll pay for, but you have to put it up in a park somewhere <laughs> where it's me and I have – in the outstretched hand, I have a can of Fosters and tucked under my arm, I have a platypus. <laughs> and I get to make up the inscription for why I have a statue. 
And I saw they said, well, we at least modify it to something less offensive. And I said, it's just a blank page. Gus had modified it. It said, Bernie sucks cock. And, and so, <laughs> so, so if you lived in the city of Bernie, Tasmania, you got this horrible message every time you logged on to Bernie.com. Your, your little vandalism probably cost me my statue with a platypus, man. And uh, welcome back. We are we are going again. Cheersies. Cheers. Can I say real quick, uh, Bernie was complaining in the last uh, recording, uh, as well as during the break, that he could just not find a picture of the uh, Mole One winner. So, Bernie, uh, I would suggest next time, uh, Google image, if you've never heard of it, the guy's <laughs> name, and Mole. I, and I got it right It'll here. be the first He's, picture that you get. Oh, you, really? You, My first you, picture you, is Betty Page. How do you spell the name? <laughs> Steven with a V or a PH? Does, Ste- does uh, your with picture, a with does a your v, picture you of Steven feature a girl with, like, cropped black hair in a dominatrix outfit? Oh, no, really? No. no, no apparently, Steven it, Cole's winner of the mole is a race car. Is it then. Cole's or <laughs> Cole? C O L E. Or he's a star nosed mole. What a <laughs> transformation. That's so weird. I guess I guess we have different versions of Google. You must be on a different internet. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's weird. Is there some reason you're I, showing? I'm not on Wi-Fi. I guess that's it. Oh yeah. Is there some reason you have a camera on Brandon? Wasn't that a faux pas? <laughs> yeah, we 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 found the ugly camera or the the, the camera <laughs> to make him look decent enough. So I guess looking now that we're at 100 episodes of the podcast, maybe we should go back and talk about uh, our favorite moments from the first 100 episodes. Yeah, absolutely. I would. I. I would. I think I can honestly say I don't remember a single moment from the first hundred episodes <laughs> of the podcast. No. What are we talking about? I think. Some of my favorite moments. Well, one of my favorite moments might be uh, Gavino talking about headlight fluid, oh, getting all over the, the driver. Yeah. yeah, that was a that was like a softball he just lobbed up there. That was amazing. It was yeah. awesome. That was a great moment. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. Well, I, well, people all the time quote stuff to me, and I honestly don't remember because people go back and listen to how how long has it taken to get to a hundred podcasts? Well, just over two years. So oh, two years. Shit, yeah. have we been doing this for two years? Yeah, well, we didn't we didn't do it weekly at first. Okay, we started in in April. It'll be two years of weekly uh, podcasts. All right. Well, also, we did probably six or seven of the audio podcasts yeah. before we even put out the first one. We were trying to figure out how to get everything right. All those ones that we threw away. Right. Yeah. Do you think we're right, gonna, rightly so. Do you think we'll put out the first video podcast? Oh, no. <laughs> well, this is the fourth. So. This, is going, yeah, this so, is going to the archive. Yeah, we're doing awesome. We finally got, finally got our rhythm. Um, I, uh, you know what? The math is the worst thing. That was funny. The Scott C. thing. That was one of the first things, yeah. 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 Um, I think we're making a shirt out of that, right? Yeah, it uh, should be available today. I've got the button. That's convenient. Yeah, how convenient. <laughs> Check out Math is the Worst, one of our favorite podcast moments. I like that Jeff set it up and Gus refused to go for it, I, so uh, that Jeff had to like fulfill I, it. I, 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 By I, the way, I, we're talking about a shirt that we're going to be selling later in the store. I totally forgot. Try so hard. <laughs> we, have, we, have, we have one advertiser, <laughs> and I can't even remember to put our, our, One advertiser is us. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even take care of that. That bodes um, well for future sponsorships. <laughs> Let, so, I want to go back to the Anderson Cooper thing, if you don't mind. No, Just please. I think the dude's awesome. Because we started talking about the mole. Okay. Wait, Wait, did, did you want to go back on no, something no, further? No, we were kind of going through the thought here, and were you going to say your favorite moment in the first 100 episodes? Well, I was going to say, I don't remember a lot of them. Like, His somebody... favorite moment is this moment where we're talking about <laughs> Anderson Cooper. The one we're sharing. I'm like a hamster. It's like five minutes ago. It's my favorite <laughs> moment when we talked about Anderson Cooper. But somebody was talking to me on the, on the website the other day about... How many, Bernie, how many electrons did you shed today? And I can't even remember what stupid comment Gavin would have made about losing right. electrons, that things just naturally lose electrons over the course of the day. But I'm sure I'm sure that happened. I yeah. have a vague it recollection sounds vague, of that. sounds vaguely familiar. It's hard to separate, I guess, because something that happened on the podcast versus something we just talked about. No, it's true. Like, I'll get, uh, I'll get comments on the site sometimes like, hey, dude, I just listened to Podcast 32, and you're totally right, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All I right. Am. Yay. I think I talked about this before when we were going into Revelation. From writing now eight full years of Red versus Blue, I don't remember a lot of the jokes. But because I wrote the jokes, I find them funny, which is like the greatest phenomenon of all time. <laughs> so I have to go back and like watch for continuity's sake, and I just sit there and laugh at my own jokes yeah. all day in my office. In fact, we've had screenings at like the Alamo or theatrical screenings. I will sit in the back of the theater and just cackle like a maniac. And people must think, who is this fucking Jack? <laughs> <laughs> laughing at all of his own stuff. But it's just like, I don't remember this, but clearly I find it funny, yeah. so I'm going to laugh. I do that with drunk gamers every once in a while. I'll go to the Wayback Machine. I go, this is fucking hilarious. Okay. <laughs> Jeff, this? Jeff oh, I did. did. <laughs> Jeff does this thing, and I'm going to bring it up. I don't where, do anything. No, like, if he'll he'll show me, like, a video he made for Achievement Hunter or whatever, the day, like, that day, and he'll he'll mouth what he says along with it and be like, <laughs> like, silently, <laughs> as he mouths everything that he said. 
It's hilarious. I mean, I should. Do you do you want me to tell some stories about you? <laughs> I didn't have anything prepared, you, but I could probably oh, think on. of something You've really quickly. You've told plenty of stories about me. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I give me two seconds. I'll <laughs> so Jeff, what does Griffin do with her mouth at home? <laughs> Can you tell us about that? <laughs> <laughs> No comment. My are, you, are you guys ever gonna? I'll tell you what my favorite part of the podcast is: the unfinished story from New Orleans. Are we ever gonna? Fin- are we ever gonna hear the rest of that? No, that story doesn't actually exist. Mm. I'm sure it does. When we get divorced, <laughs> to celebrate the divorce, <laughs> I will come on and be. It'll be the first thing I talk about. Okay, I'll finish the story. All you right. know what I like? I like that you assume that should there be a split, that you'll be the one that's still here. Yeah, that you'll be on the podcast. Still. <laughs> I didn't say I'd still be here. I just said I'd come on. I think I we'd all special guests. Much rather hear Griffin's divorce <laughs> stories about you. <laughs> I think this would be a lot better, actually. We will see. Well, well that's for the courts to decide. Yeah. My favorite uh, part of the first hundred episodes is the like five episodes that Bernie and Jack talk about football coaches. Mm. <laughs> for, like six weeks. I, six I wouldn't weeks rope, straight. I wouldn't rope Bernie into that. I think that, that was mostly Jack. I oh, tried. To, if you go back and listen, I tried to get us out of yeah. that conversation a lot of different times. By the way, Jack, before the podcast came in, he was like, "Hey, um, you about to go on the podcast?" And I was like, "Yeah." And he goes. You guys were really mean to me two podcasts ago. <laughs> two podcasts. I don't even ago. remember it. He was like, "You guys were really, really <laughs> something." I don't know. It was just like really rough. So maybe not so much this time. I don't know. He was like, "I wish you told us that earlier." Him. I should. Have. I didn't think about <laughs> well, it. Well, here's the problem. I don't that. have any memory of him being. But I, I'm sure we weren't. I'm sure we were honest. You know, <laughs> that's important, right? Honesty. I'm sure we weren't being mean. We were just I, being forthright. I hear it's the best policy. Well, he's just he does he's inadvertently giving us something more to make fun of him about because now yeah. clearly he can't spot a trend. You know? <laughs> he, he's slow on the uptake on top of everything else. He was actually upset about the conversation uh, about Bernie and I had about when we went to see a uh, football game a couple weeks ago. Oh. oh, so since our viewers don't know that story, since the first video podcast, maybe we should just retell it. Podcast ninety eight. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, yeah. We're, uh, Something about where Jack thought the girl was into him, but she was obviously into Joel. Oh, oh. yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was, that was tough. And then yeah. we made a, we made a, we somehow related a joke. I think I told a story about how my dog doesn't like to take walks, so I pick her up and I walk oh, around right. the other side of the street, and then I spin around in a circle, and then I put her down, and she's confused, and then she'll go wherever I tell her to. We related it to Jack somehow. You said who would make it further? Who would? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He so was upset about previously that. we talked about our Fitbits that Jack and I have, where we yeah. measure how many steps we take in a, in a day. See, and this is my this is my Fitbit. Got one. And you Pretty keep cool. it, you keep it on your hip and it tells you how many steps I have. How today, you doing today? I have two thousand steps. Oh, I'm kicking your ass. I got twenty two fifty eight. It's and I have the flu. Fairly early in the morning. <laughs> those those steps count like one point five times yeah. as much as normal steps. <laughs> You're supposed to get ten thousand steps in a day. I've been averaging about fourteen thousand over the You're last doing seven days. Well. And Jack has three thousand steps. Nice. Now that's not to say that Jack's not working hard doing other stuff, but he doesn't like to you walk. Have I have metrics to back this up now. Today, you already have almost as many steps as he does an entire day. As he will in his entire day. I, you know, I just thought about another, fa- shut down. another favorite moment I have in the first 100 podcast was the initial podcast that you used to edit. I think those were my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet. Was it like I only did the first six, and then you took off from there, right? Yeah, something like that. I, uh, I think my favorite thing, the trend is probably when we started using the user-submitted theme songs. Yeah. And nice. I, I also like you can almost date when they were turned in by Jeff, Bernie, Gus, and whoever right. it is. For yeah. a long time, it was Gavin, even after Gavin yeah. went back for from about the UK. six months after he left. And yeah. then, like, today we heard Jack, even though Griffin's been in the seat for, what, six months now, it seems like. So is there anything else you want to cover? We're going to be wrapping up here pretty soon. Uh, oh. I feel like we just got started. I think there was a... Uh, you were going to say something about Anderson Cooper. I interrupted you. About Anderson Cooper getting hit in the head? No, I was just thinking, because what happened was... He was he was attacked by Egyptian protesters. I mean, the, the people were all on their side of you know they're going for democracy and all that. But sure. it's like he just got in the wrong place at the wrong time, and some dude was like, "We're taking that camera. Or don't take pictures of us." And then all of a sudden they started just waylaying. Yeah, on Yeah, they were fucking you know, loading on him. Yeah, yeah. dude's pretty ripped too. I wouldn't fuck with Anderson Cooper. He, he works he? out seriously. <laughs> yeah, I'd go toe to toe. No, Anderson would. Cooper. Yeah, I would. He would take you down. I would. Yeah. I feel like I'd take him. No. <laughs> he might spin it later on the newscast. Like, I'll, be the sh- I'll be the shit out of that yeah, guy. You don't wanna, you don't hey, good, guy tell, tell about pop. editing. You kept pointing to your iPhone earlier. What is, what's I going have on? a dare for Bernie. A Uh-oh. dare? A I'm double, gonna, I'm double gonna, dare. You can't gonna, refuse. I'm gonna, I, I can refuse a double dare. I promise you. I Jeff can. and I were uh, driving on the east side, and we got behind this guy who had, you know, the people advertise on their cars. He was advertising a brain massage and had his phone number. So I, we took a picture. So we would like to dare you to get a brain massage, whatever that is. From some dude yes. who advertises on his well, car? That's don't, his car. We do not want to dare you oh, to do Oh, come this. on, do it. She wants to dare you to get a brain massage. 
I just want to know what a brain massage is. Here's my concern. <laughs> Here's a dude driving down the street in East Austin advertising his business on his car. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm worried he doesn't know where the brain is. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to get a different kind of massage altogether. Might be the, it might not be the brain you're thinking about. I think we should film it. I think you should get a brain massage and we should film it. There, there was this thing. You guys are sick, so you might take advantage of this. We used to actually have a lady who would come in and give us chair massages once a yeah. week. Back when we were like, like six years ago when mm-hmm. we were down in Buda. And uh, one time I was a little congested. And she said, I'm going to give you a sinus massage. And I was like, okay. And so she does this thing where she, like, taps my face like this. Like, she's literally doing this, and she's, like, stimulating the energy meridians. You'll love this. <laughs> stimulating the energy meridians in my skull. And I'm like, this is horseshit. I'm not kidding. 20 minutes later, everything just, like, my whole face just, like, shot out of my face after she's she like, left. Yeah. It was fucking disgusting. She's like a Shaolin monk doing, like, some kind of secret, secret attack on you. Yeah, it was like the five-finger death yeah. thing that she yeah, did. Yeah, no, our friend Tina... Tina Rodriguez, who yeah. was in Pajama Achievements, she, she's a massage therapist, and she did that to me one time. And it's like, it's fucking intense. Like, you drain, you feel like your brain's coming out. And it's really gross. That's really gross. And then you're also like, I don't want hot Tina to see me looking this <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> Tina's hot, right. by the way. Tina's hot. Well, uh, it's been fun, but we got to wrap up. Uh, I think things went well for our first video podcast. Yeah, can I bring up something? We can never get away from, uh, whenever we try to end the podcast, yeah. we can't ever seem to end them. There's something I want to bring up, which I thought was really cool. Um, we've all been really into the Dead Space franchise lately. Yeah, yeah. The developers from Dead Space did something really cool where somebody complained I saw that. on Twitter that their dog knocked over their Xbox when they had a copy of Dead Space 2 in their Xbox and it broke the disc. And I guess the art director for Dead Space read that tweet and then drew a picture here of Isaac, the main character from Dead Space, chastising the dog <laughs> and sent them a signed copy of Dead nice. Space 2. Awesome. Yeah, that was pretty rad. I thought that was awesome. That's awesome. Do you remember something similar like that that we went through? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Where, with a certain Xbox? No, no, no. With my kid. Where when my kid was old enough to not have a pacifier anymore and I was like, we got to get the pacifier away from this kid. You mean when you guys mailed it to Batman? Yeah. And so I thought he was really into Batman time. So I said, okay, Batman needs your pacifier. Let's mail it to Batman. So we just wrote <laughs> Batman on the envelope and Gotham City, and we put it, and that was it. And he was like, okay, Batman needs it. I'll mail it to him. He right. never asked for his pacifier ever again. Right. And uh, the cool thing about that was that Kathleen then sent him a photo from Warner Brothers Animation of Batman holding his pacifier, saying, I'll keep it safe, Jack. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Cute. I know we're out of time. Sorry. Right. Well, uh, thanks for watching, everyone, and hopefully we'll do this again soon. Ta-ta. Bye. Bye, everybody.